Today we're going to visit with waterfall biologist Mike Szymanski and talk about the recent breeding duck survey. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. First of all, Mike, explain what is the Breeding Duck Survey and how long has it been going on? Sure, Mike. We, uh, our, our state agency runs a uh, breeding waterfowl and habitat survey across 1,816 miles on eight transects that run north and south across the state. Uh, we've been doing the survey for 74 years now. We believe this to be the longest running uh, breeding waterfowl survey anywhere in the world. Um, uh, especially since it's uh, been conducted continuously over that time period since 1948 was the first year. Uh, it's pretty unique also in that we're one of very, a very few number of states that conduct a uh, state survey. Uh, our survey is separate from the survey that's run by the Fish and Wildlife Service across the northern U.S. and Canada. Uh, with Canadian partners. Um, unfortunately, that survey has not been conducted for uh, the past two springs now because of COVID-19 concerns. Mike, you said eight transects, 1,800 miles. How are these surveys conducted? What, explain that a little bit. Right, Mike, so we're running as a two-person crew uh, doing the counts roadside from a vehicle. Um, we have a person that's primarily doing all the observations and another person recording the data into a geo-reference tablet. Um, electronically entering the data, of course. Uh, and then we're counting out 220 yards from each side of the road, and we're counting every wetland basin that has water in it, uh, classifying that basin to its basin regime and not what the water is in the basin. Uh, and then also identifying every species of waterfowl and classifying their social grouping. So whether it's a pair of mallards sitting there or a lone drake pintail sitting there or a group of say shovelers sitting there uh, all that has ramifications as to what uh, the numbers get expanded into for uh, indicated breeding pairs because there there is the assumption that if a, a drake is sitting there by itself it's got a hen nesting in the grass somewhere okay what is this data used for so our department's data is used mostly as a communications tool and a way for our biologists to understand what's going on the landscape right now. We can turn our survey data around very quickly and, and know the situation very fast. Uh, we are not part of the May survey that the Fish and Wildlife Service conducts that is actually used for setting regulations. But uh, we, in the past, our survey has been used as kind of a, a check on certain oddities in other surveys. Um, we also have research ramifications with our survey. And, um, you know, in the last two years, we've been the only survey conducted in the Prairie Pothole region as a whole, uh, including Canada. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really a fantastic communications tool and, and data check for what goes on in, in our state, which is the most important state for breeding waterfowl. Okay, looking behind you, it's a dry wetland. We have a lot of shallow wetlands and dry wetlands around the state. How does that affect things? Sure, so this year we had, uh, it was a very unique year in that it was our largest percentage decrease in wetland numbers with water ever in the history of the survey. We, our number of wetlands holding water went down 80% uh, from last year. And that's, that's a indication of really how dynamic this system is that we work in. Um, you know, the previous year was our sixth wettest year, and this is our fifth driest out of 74 years. So we essentially have no um, temporary and seasonal basins holding water on the landscape right now, and that has huge ramifications for duck production in the state. Um, not only for, you know, feeding areas for ducks, but ducks have pairing territories that they need to be able to set up on and that sort of kicks off the breeding process. And if they aren't able to do that, they aren't gonna breed in an area. It's also sort of the, the harbinger for brood habitat conditions to come later in the year. So if a hen sees an area not holding good wetland conditions, she's gonna work under the assumption that there's no place to raise a brood later anyways. So even though we counted a fairly large number of ducks on our survey, we we counted 2.9 million ducks. Um, 
Their breeding status was very disrupted this year and most of those ducks are not going to nest unless we have a, a very, very dramatic change in the landscape. Um, without that temporary water, you know, whether it's wetlands being drained for other uses or naturally drying up, ducks will not breed. Um, I will say, however, that it is good to have the wetlands dry up periodically on a natural cycle that helps keep them productive. Um, if water sits around too long, gets too deep, it's stagnant, it's just not that productive. But as it goes through its natural process, it maintains productivity. So doing this from time to time isn't the worst thing in the world, but uh, the breadth of dryness this year is very extreme. Usually we have kind of pockets in the state drying up and doing their, doing their natural process, but it's everywhere this year and it does not seem like conditions in Prairie Canada are, are real great either. I, I don't know that they're as extreme as what we have going on in North Dakota right now, but uh, dry conditions and ephemeral wetlands seem very prevalent in the Prairie Powder region this year. Mike, other than the dry wetlands, anything else concerning? Well, I think um, this year uh, certainly marks the first year that we've deviated from our very high wetland numbers and duck numbers of the past 27 years that started uh, with 1994, basically. Um, that was sort of a new era for ducks in North Dakota where we had very abundant CRP on the landscape, very wet conditions, very few red fox. Uh, we, we still don't have the red fox, but our habitat base is, is very depleted now. We're down to a little over 1.2 million acres of CRP in the state. And as I mentioned before, this is our fifth lowest uh, wetland count uh, in our May survey. So we're, we're back into conditions that are pre-1994, uh, something we haven't seen in a long time. Um, our mallard count was extremely low as well as our pintail count. Those numbers were counts that haven't been seen this low since the drought of the 1990s. We only had 448,000 mallards on the survey and we only had about 80,000 pintails on the survey. Those are far below average for the last 27 years. Mike, North Dakota produces a lot of ducks on a normal year. Yeah, we're, uh, we're very important for mid-continent duck production. Our geographical space is, you know, typically only about seven to 10% of the space that's producing ducks for the mid-continent region, but we're, we're generally settling somewhere between 20 and 30% of the mid-continent region's populate, population of ducks. And that's the, that's the region, the mid-continent region is basically the central and Mississippi flyways. So the middle, the middle 24 states of the country is where we're a part of providing ducks and duck production for. And uh, we've been carrying a pretty heavy load over the last 20 years, basically from the large benefit of CRP on the landscape and a lot of water. Um, it helps when a large region like that has a lot of places that come and go for duck production, we've been fairly consistent in that mix. And uh, we're not gonna be there this year producing ducks. And it could very well be that we, we don't do well in the future as our duck numbers continue to go down. Mike, at this point, what can waterfall hunters expect this fall? Well, Mike, normally I'd, I'd tell you that uh, it's probably too, too early to make any big predictions, but um, based on how things are playing out in North Dakota and a large part of the Prairie Pothole region, there are a couple of good pockets in South Dakota that look all right and a tiny part of North Dakota that's not too bad, but um, uh, it's probably gonna be pretty tough this year. Duck, duck hunting is tough when there aren't a lot of young birds in the air. And that's, that's not only for us, that's anybody up and down the flyway. Um, if there aren't young birds to hunt, hunting gets a little harder. And it's kind of looking like one of those years where we are gonna have very few young birds in the flight. Uh, of course, we'll do a, a duck brood survey in July to get another handle on habitat conditions and what we see for production. But based on the social mannerisms of ducks right now, it, it seems like there is very limited uh, breeding activity happening. 
Um, so, I mean, folks can stay tuned throughout the year and, and we'll let people know as we do that July duck brood survey and then again our fall wetland survey uh, to give an indication of habitat conditions. But I, I certainly wouldn't be expecting much uh, out of duck season this year. A lot of great information, Mike. Thank you. You bet.